Today I'm going to be doing a story of our farmhouse front porch. I've shared this porch quite a bit throughout the last three years since we purchased this property, but I've never done a full before and after story of the porch. In the last week or so, Luke and I have been preparing for a blog retreat that I'm hosting here at my home. A few close blogging friends of mine, we have the three year annual uh, retreat. Basically we've been going to each person's local area and this year it is me. And so we needed to completely freshen up the porch. We didn't need to, but I just wanted to. Everything needed a fresh cone of paint, everything from the porch to the rocking chairs, it all needed a lot of touching up and now it looks so beautiful. And so I wanna share with you the whole story of this porch because we've done so many things over the years and I wanna bring it all together. When we first moved to our property, this porch really caught my eye. I loved the charm of the barn and the silo and the cottage and I could have a vision for all of it. And I knew that a front porch where you could sit outside on a hot summer day, enjoy lemonade, sweet tea, was something that was really important to me. Our house needed a porch. It didn't exactly have all of the charm that I envisioned, but I could see the potential. The window trim and the door had accents of a hunter green color, which I know a lot of you really loved, but it just didn't fit in with the vision I was hoping to tie the cottage and the barn and everything all together. It like white wood. And so we ended up going with a fresh coat of white. Now for the front door, the first thing we did was strip the door down to its original wood color. I found that the wood was very inconsistent and it didn't appear to be the type of wood that should have ever been raw. And so we ended up going back with a green color, which is where it is today. Now the front porch is concrete and I really wanted to take it out and replace it with wood. But after talking to a lot of friends and other old house experts and hearing all of the trouble they have with their wooden porches and the expense that it would be to actually take the porch out, we decided that was a very bad idea and instead embraced the concrete by painting it. So we used a porch and floor paint that had a little bit of grit and grip to it for walking and just prepped the surface by power washing and then painting the porch. Now on the front there was a big concrete block and I knew that I would like a wider, nicer entrance. And so Luke and I built some steps there instead. He jackhammered out the concrete block and we put our two heads together and figured out the stair risers and treads and all that stuff and built two little handrails and three steps, which gave it such a nicer appearance because it's wider and of course the wood has some charm. The porch color runs out straight into the treads and so it feels almost like it's wood because it's an extension of the porch. It looks seamless and so you get the feeling that it's wood. Now, another thing that we would do to cover up the front of the porch to make it not so glaringly obvious that it's a big concrete slab is by adding in some landscaping. Now, this took us two years to do. We brought in flagstone sidewalks. 
This essentially is just the flat flagstone rocks puzzle piece together so that they're nice and close. And then we did the polymeric sand in between. We thought about doing the gravel in between, but I was going for low maintenance here with the kids. We do have the gravel patio in the back, which I love, but it is lots of sweeping and using the blower to put the gravel back in place. I didn't want to deal with that all throughout the property. So we used the sidewalks to tie together the cottage and the back patio area. I really wanted our property to feel cozy with a lot of little nooks instead of it being just like a big yard and things that were very disconnected. Tying them together with sidewalks and then adding a picket fence here in the middle of the yard on the way to the barn. The sidewalk going to the patio, going to the cottage. Everything has a more charming feel. And then after we did the sidewalks, we added in some landscaping. So we brought in native plants. I actually use the Picture This app to identify what they are. Because what happens is we put in so many different things. We have it wrapping around the front, to the right, to the left, in the back, and I forget what all I put in. But we did a lot of natives, like echinacea and yarrow, and then native hydrangeas and ferns. And then I also did bring in some non-native things as well. It's just all very mixed up, but I love how it looks this time of year, all overgrown. I even do a lot of cut flower arrangements from my landscaping. And I like whenever it starts to get overgrown, how it covers up the front and just makes it more charming. Obviously after several years, it will be more grown up and more beautiful. Now for the ceiling of the porch, it had beadboard, but it also had bird's nests and lots of holes and rot. And so we ripped out a good portion of it and found some old beadboard that matched it. We had to find this from a salvage shop and pieced in the parts that were bad with the parts that were good. Now we could have gotten all new beadboard just at Lowe's or something, but I really wanted to keep the old beadboard because it has a certain appearance and even just the gaps and the way that the seams fall that make it look antique that I just would not be able to find with modern day beadboard. Another thing we did to add the original charm was bring in spindles and corbels. So this home originally, if you look at the side porch, would have had between each of the porch supports, would have had running trim and corbels, but at some point in history, they were removed. And interestingly, when we first moved into this property, I did not like any of the swirly things. I didn't like the swirl in the gable. I didn't like the swirls on the side porch. I really thought I wanted this very basic farmhouse, but after learning more about the Victorian times and studying the interior of my home, I decided that I wanted to full-blown embrace it. And now I think it's just so charming. I cannot believe I didn't like it before. Later, obviously I end up adding all of these extra swirls and gables and corbels. I ordered them all from a local woodworking company. The way I did it was I went to the side porch, the ones that I was trying to emulate, and I traced around the little spindle things and around the corbels, and I mailed them in and had them custom made for this front porch. I love the added charm that it brings in. Now, this is not obviously related to this porch, but I did want to talk a little bit more how I tied in that same look over with the cottage. We had a red, shabby little cottage that needed everything inside and out. I've done that reveal here if you want to check that out. But I wanted it to feel very connected to the house. And the way that we did that was we added a gable out of the front of the cottage and I purchased on Etsy another little swirly gingerbread trim piece to fit up in there and then we ran the sidewalk straight to its porch which we made out of bricks that we found locally and now the whole thing just feels very connected when you're standing in the back at the patio and you peek past the window box and the side of the house you get a glimpse of the porch with the swirly trim and a glimpse of the cottage with the gable out front and the porch and the roses and the landscaping it all is definitely 
moving toward the vibe that I wanted. Now, eventually I'd like to maybe connect the garden by adding some paths out. That way you can see my cow just grazing out here. But what we've done to this porch has really elevated the curb appeal of this property. Now on the porch, we also did bring in a mat. It's a vinyl floor mat from VMAT Home. We did that to give it the feel of a rug without having to deal with cleaning a rug. So we've now had this for well over a year and Luke recently power washed it. And now it just looks as clean and perfect as always. I love as I'm looking around this porch that by spending a day or two just sprucing things up, power washing, repainting the porch swing and the rocking chairs and taking all of the cushions and bringing them inside and washing them and washing the pillow covers, everything just feels so fresh and new and beautiful as if we had just built this entire thing. feature of my porch that I really love are these crocs. So I use these as planters and it's great because in the fall I bring in mums and pumpkins and then in the summer right now I bring in vines and petunias and make them very cheerful and summery. And so I love having those to swap out to make my porch seasonal. All right, I hope that you enjoyed this update of our porch from start to finish. You can see how it looked in the very beginning, brought you through all the projects to where it is now. I really don't think we have anything else to do. I like just where it is now. It's a nice palette for Christmas wreaths, summer flowers, fall pumpkins. It is complete. And now all it needs is just regular cleaning and maintaining and seasonal elements to make it beautiful throughout the seasons. All right, well, thank you so much for watching this video. If you're brand new, I do farmhouse updates like this. I just shared our farmhouse bathroom reveal. If you wanna check that video out, our cottage reveal, we're about to reveal the sunroom. We've done kitchen, bathrooms, bedrooms, everything in this. So if you enjoy farmhouse renovation, make sure to follow along. I also do new videos every week on food from scratch, natural living, and a handmade home. Thank you so much for stopping by our farmhouse.